to my channel. I'm Kasaya. This is Saya Swag. Um, I am excited about today's pattern. I love it when I can find new designers. She's not specifically new, but new to me. Um, first time I have done one of her patterns and it is adorable and it's a brand new one that she just came out with. It's called the Michelle bag. It is so cute. I love it. Um, I made mine out of all vinyl. This vinyl is from Your Vinyl Source. It is gorgeous floral vinyl. Um, I love the quilted front pocket on it. So this bag comes with a few options. You can do just a crossbody strap like I did. She has the option for backpack connectors so you can wear it as a backpack. Or she has one that you put on the back of the bag that will be a sling. So you can do all of them, you can do one of them, you can do two of them, whatever you want for your bag. I tend to just wear mine crossbody. So that's what I did on this bag. Um, it is adorable, it went fast, cutting it out. I was able to cut out the pieces probably less than an hour because I used all waterproof canvas and vinyl. There's hardly any any interfacing involved and it's a pretty fun, fast make. Let's go over it. So I did a double zipper pull on the top. There's nothing on the back. You could put another pocket on the back if you really wanted to. Um, but again, if you're doing the sling version of this bag, that is put on this back panel. I did a quilted front pocket. Ugh, so cute. I used my um, pink flamingo thread and I think it just added just a pop of color. Absolutely love it. Nice big pocket. Perfect for those iPhones, keys, whatever you need to slip in there. And then you open this up and it is a slip pocket inside and a tiny little zipper pocket. I don't know if I would put a zipper pocket, um, in one if I did it again. It's just such a small bag and the zipper pocket is super small. So if you want to leave that out, you totally can. I do like the little slip pocket inside though. I used all waterproof canvas. This is the waterproof canvas I'm going to be carrying on my website. It's a little lighter than the 11 ounce Ottertex that I get from fabric.com, but still has good weight to it. Um, uh, it's sewed up beautifully. And you do bind this bag. It is with binding. Don't let that scare you. It is not hard. It really isn't, guys. I promise you. I love binding bags. Um, it gives it such a good structure. What else do I need to tell you about this? I use this antique copper hardware. Not a lot of hardware that you need. Crossbody strap, D-rings, and zipper pulls. So pretty a low hardware bag. And I think this is a great thing if you're just looking for a bag you can sit down and do in one day. This is it. The only interfacing I used was I did put some in these D-rings and then the foam that I used to quilt my front pocket with. And that's it. That's all the interfacing I used. That's it. Okay. So please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Everything that I used will be down in the description. The pattern to purchase will be down in the description. She is giving me a discount code. I'm not sure the length of it yet, but that will be down in the description as well. So you can get a little fun discount if you're looking to purchase this pattern. Again, I'm, I'll put how long the code is good for. And let me know excuse me, let me know if you guys have any questions and let's start making this bag. I'm just gonna go over my pieces real quick before I dig into this bag. I've never made it before. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward and I can do it the first time around. I'll go over my pieces. I'm using waterproof canvas. This is the new waterproof canvas I am going to be offering on my website. It's a little bit um, lighter than the stuff I get from fabric.com. It is an Ottertex, you know, waterproof type of canvas. So, um, okay, I'll be carrying four colors of that. 
So I am using just vinyl and waterproof canvas. I'm not interfacing anything except for my D-rings. I am going to be doing this as a crossbody. So I put a tiny piece of Decaville down the middle of my D-rings and that's it for the interfacing. Um, okay, so I have my crossbody strap. I just cut it the length of the vinyl. I am doing a three fourths inch hardware. So this is cut to three inches wide by the length of the vinyl. I have my two D-ring connectors. Again, it's one and a half inches wide because I am doing three fourths inch hardware. I have my bottom gusset pieces, lining and exterior. I have my front pocket pieces. Now I did quilt my front pocket piece. I kind of liked how that turned out. I used the pink flamingo thread um, that I sell. I really love it with this vinyl. It looks really good. So I quilted that. All I did was lay foam, marked lines one inches going up this way, one inches going this way apart, and then I sewed down those lines and quilted the panel. So front and a lining of that pocket. Um, my interior slip pocket, instead of cutting two pieces because I'm using waterproof canvas, I cut one and made it a half inch taller. And I will just be folding down that top part just like that and top stitching that and just using this one piece as my pockets just to cut down on the bulk of my bag. Um, I have my two lining pieces for my zipper pocket, my two lining pieces, front and back panels, my two front and back panel for my exterior and my zipper panel pieces, lining and exterior. Okay. It cut out pretty quick. I feel like this is going to be a quick bag. Um, I have my main zipper closure. I'm doing a double pull on it. I have my inside zipper pocket. I have my swivel um, hooks my slider, my D-rings, and my name tag. The only other thing that is not here that I will be using is some binding. I will probably just cut uh, one inch strips of this waterproof canvas and use that to bind the bag. All right, let's start sewing. All right, so I went ahead and put my name tag on my quilted front panel pocket. I thought that was a good spot for it. So I went ahead and added that. And now I'm going to make my cross body strap and sew up my D-ring connectors. So all I did was I marked the center of my cross body strap. I put double-sided tape along each side of that center line. I'm gonna take the tape off or the backing off the tape and I'm just going to be folding each raw edge right a little bit um, less than the center. I want a tiny bit of a gap. So right above that center line, and I'll do that on both sides. And then I will fold my 
strap one more time so there's no raw edges, and then I will sew down both sides for my crossbody strap. Okay, so I will go and I will put a rivet on here and I will put a rivet right in here where they all connect. All right, so there's my strap and here are my D-rings. I'm going to put a line of double-sided tape down the middle of those D-ring connectors, fold those in and sew them. Just folding my raw edges into the center. Just like that. And then I will sew down each side of them. Top stitch. Okay, and then I will just take my D-ring, set it in there, fold it over, and I'm just gonna baste it closed for now. Okay, so I have my D-rings done, my crossbody strap done. We will now move on to the back. Okay, so I have my front quilted pocket piece and the lining for that. I'm gonna take them right sides together here and just attach those. I'm gonna do a um, stitch along the top. Pay attention to your seam allowance because it does change throughout the pattern. Okay, so we're gonna sew those two together at the top. Take some tiny little pinking shears here. There's a slight curve, so this will help with that curve up at the top. When you fold it over, I'm just gonna trim it ever so slightly. Like, I hardly trimmed any off enough to give it some notches, okay? And then I'm gonna turn that, and I wanna press it. And then I'm gonna top stitch along the top of this pocket. Okay, so both my right sides are now out. All right, so there's my 
front, there's the back of my pocket. I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch along this top edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and just base the rest of it closed here because we don't need it to be separate. Okay, so that's my front pocket. And then I'm going to take my exterior front piece and we're gonna put those right sides up together and we're gonna baste our pocket on the three sides. Okay. Okay, so that's my front piece, super simple. And it's got that cute little pocket, that looks adorable. Okay, so since I'm not doing any connectors or sling on my back piece, I don't have anything to do on my back piece, I'm gonna set that aside. Trimming off some threads there. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my lining pieces real quick. Okay, here's one of my lining pieces and Let's do my slip pocket first. Again, I am just doing one piece of waterproof canvas for my slip pocket to cut down on the bulk. Um, if you're doing cotton, you need to do two pieces, obviously. Um, but normally, waterproof canvas does not fray, so I just did some double-sided tape along the top, and I'm just folding it down to give it a finished edge along the top, okay? And then I'm just gonna top stitch that. And really that's just for looks. We're just making it look nice. All right. And now I wanna add that to my lining. So I'm just gonna put those two together and just line up the three sides and I'm going to baste that onto my lining just like we did the front slip pocket. Simple. Okay, slip pocket. Now I'm going to take my other one and we are going to install a little zipper pocket. It's just gonna be a little baby. Okay, so I'm gonna take this pen. All right, so I need to mark my, actually let's do, I'm gonna mark it down three fourths. What am I doing? Right? Yeah, that's right. Marking out my box on the back of this. All right, so I'm gonna center it up here. So I'm just giving my um, canvas a good crease so I can see my centers. Okay, I'm placing them right sides together. I'm just gonna center that pocket, okay? That right there looks good. And then I'm gonna sew that on.
I'm gonna cut that out. through I'm gonna take this to my iron and give it just a tiny little press all right oh this is just gonna be a baby pocket it's just so little all right I'm gonna go give that a press okay I didn't even have to use my iron I finger pressed that and it just it folded really nicely. This canvas kind of creases really nicely. Okay, so I've got that pulled to the back. I've got double-sided tape on my zipper here. I'm gonna take the bottom off, fit that in, and then I'll do the other side. And I don't know if I, well, we'll see when I'm done, what I think about a zipper pocket in this. It may be, a small enough bag that you don't really need this inside zipper pocket is what I'm thinking, but we'll see when I'm done. Okay, there's the top. Now I'm gonna sew around that and sew that in. I'm just gonna trim my zipper down a little bit because it's longer than I need to have it. Okay, now I'm gonna add the back part to my pocket. So I'm just gonna take this back piece Lay it down right sides together with that zipper pocket piece and I'm just going to sew around that. And close it all up because we don't need to leave it open. We are binding this bag so we don't need it open in the end. All right, so here we go. There's my pocket. I mean, yeah, if you wanted to keep something safe, it's small, like three fingers fit in maybe, maybe four. It's a small pocket. So if you're thinking that's too small for me, then don't worry about it, but it's cute. It's little, it'll hold important little things. Okay, so next I wanna just put these with the exterior pieces since we are binding. I want my zipper pocket personally to be on the back. So I'm gonna put my zipper piece on the back. I am putting them wrong sides together, okay? 
wrong sides together and I am going to baste these two pieces together. So they are one piece. And I will do that for each side. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just sew around that and baste them together. Okay, so while I have this, I'm going to go ahead and clip my centers because I know I will need that for the final assembly of the bag. Mark your center somehow if it's not clipping with a marker of some kind. I'm going to do it on those sides and on these sides. So I'll do that for the other two pieces as well. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside and do my slip pocket pieces together, okay? Again, wrong sides are together. Wrong sides together. My right sides are facing out. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing. Now, if you don't want all the layers, I realize the slip pocket adds more layers to this. So if you're trying to stay away from bulk layers, I would put the slip pocket piece with the back piece instead of with the front because this adds a few more layers to it. So do it the other way if your machine can't handle it or whichever way you prefer. All right, so now we have our exterior and lining front back pieces done. We're gonna move on to our zipper gusset. Okay, so we're gonna do our zipper um, panel first. So I have all my centers marked or clipped somehow on all of these pieces. Um, you're gonna start by taking your zipper and one of your exterior pieces, line up those centers right there. And we are going to baste the two together. So our right sides are together. And I'll go down this way. Okay, so right sides together. I'm gonna baste those first. My zipper is cut just a little bit longer than my um, panel pieces for a reason. 
just because I would rather have to trim a little off of my zipper than it be too short. Okay. All right, so that's the first step right there. Now we want to take the other side here and we're gonna take our lining piece, right side down, find the center, and now we're gonna sew at our full seam allowance. Right sides are together, wrong sides are out, and we're gonna sew along that zipper. You could always take your zipper pulls off and add them at the very end as well. A lot of the times I do that, I just, I don't know, forgot to do that this time and put them on. So if you wanted to take them completely off, you totally could. All right, so after that is sewn, you wanna press both sides out, right sides facing out, and we are going to top stitch along right here now. And now since we are binding this bag, this is gonna be one full piece. So you can go ahead and top stitch or baste the rest of that zipper closed with your two pieces together. is one side of my zipper panel. They're just sewn together like that. That's what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side the same exact way. Okay, so once you have your zipper panel done, you wanna take your D-ring connectors. If you're doing a cross body strap, this is how I'm doing them. Now, if your machine can't handle the layers with your cross body strap in the seam here, she does have a way of riveting and a no raw edge way of riveting them onto your gusset so they are not in your seam. I know my machine can handle it, so I'm gonna put mine right here on my seam allowance, or it will be in my seam allowance, but right here in the middle of the zipper. Okay, and I'm gonna baste that on. I'm also gonna trim off my zipper here. Now, I should have done it a little bit farther down because I want to be able, I think I'll still be able to, I want to be able to rivet this bottom part on there. I maybe should have put it a, just a little bit further down on there, but that's okay. It'll be all right. It's not that big of a bag, so I think it'll be okay. Just trimming down my zipper. I don't need all that extra zipper there. Melt the edges. Okay, so now we want to add the other part of our gusset. Here we go. We're going to take our gusset pieces now and finish it off. So you want to take right sides together on the edge. All right. 
and I'm going to baste the exterior right side together first. And then I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to add our lining right sides together. Okay, right sides together. And then do your full seam allowance. Again, pay attention to the seam allowance in the pattern because it does change depending on what you are sewing. Okay. I think my um, D-ring placement actually was kind of perfect with this seam allowance. Yeah, I think that was good. All right, so now you wanna flip your pieces down and we are going to top stitch. And you're top stitching along the bottom gusset piece you just added. All right, and through that D-ring. Perfect. All right, that is what you want. There's the front. There is my back. All right, so now you want to repeat on this other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other side of my gusset piece and I'm going to flip it up so it's right side together with the edge of my zipper and you will be making a full circle with your pieces when you're done. All right, so I'm going to sew that one on first again, baste that. And then flip that over and you're pulling up the other side of that, right sides together, up to the other side. All right, full seam allowance. My foot kind of struggled over there, so I'm just putting something under it because I don't want it to tear anything. There we go. Perfect. All right, so now again, you want to fold them so they are both right sides out. Okay, you're going to have a full circle now, and we're going to top stitch that. Awesome. Okay, so after that's added, we want to base the rest of this closed so it's one full piece. So I'm just kind of going along and clipping it together down here. And I will be sewing this all together so it's all connected. Okay, so now I'm going to baste these two edges together.
All right, so you should have a full circle now. <laughs> full circle, my dog's barking. Um, I'm gonna go get my rivet press, I'll do it on camera. We're gonna put a rivet here and here, and then I'll also put the rivets in my strap, my crossbody strap, and then we will start putting this whole thing together. All right, here we go with the rivets. So some of you have been wanting me to do this on camera, so I'm gonna do it on camera. So I got a new little rivet hole maker. Um, I'm hoping it lasts longer and goes easier. I have it linked on my Amazon shop, which will be down below in the description. So I'm just going to make holes right below these connectors through all the layers. I want it through all my layers, okay? Maybe. Mm. It's having a hard time because the zipper is there. That one won't work for this. I'm going to use my hole press, my hole punch. There we go. Yep. Too many layers for that little guy. All right, so I put my hole in there. I've got my rivets here. And stick one through. There we go. And I just get my press here. Mm, it's kind of off center. That's okay. There's one. Let's see if I can center this one better, huh? All right, let's see about right. There. that in through all the layers. Put my back on. All right, there is my second rivet. So I have my rivets below my connectors there. And then I'm just gonna do it on my handle as well. I think this should work for this. It's a lot easier to press, but it's not going through all the layers. Okay, so while this is much easier to press and goes through a lot more smoothly, this piece right here isn't as long, so it doesn't go through as many layers as my cheaper version do you see how much longer the tip is than this? So while this can be a pain in the butt and I have to oil it and clean it out and wipe it off a lot, it goes through more layers than this. So there's my review. Okay, <laughs> here we go. So let's put our rivets on and continue. Okay, rivets installed on my strap, on my gusset. Let's continue. Okay, so now we are going to be attaching all the pieces together. I have two pieces of waterproof canvas cut, one inch is wide. You can do one and a fourth. It's just whatever um, is comfortable to you. And um, 30 to 40 inches long. I did mine, I think like 36 inches long. I like to make sure I have a little extra. All right, so I have that. So I have my centers clipped on my gusset, four centers, right? You wanna line up these edges here. You wanna clip top and bottom. 
And then you want to go like this, which I don't think I did. Huh? I better do that. And I like to clip those centers together here and then clip your other four little areas here on each side. And that will help everything line up because we already clipped our centers on our panel pieces. Okay. So here we go. We're going to clip this all together. So I want my um, piece right side up, my exterior piece. And then I'm going to take my gusset and turn it inside out. And I want to clip all my centers first. Okay, my top two centers here. I'm going to put a couple clips just so it stays here. And then my bottom. And then you probably will need to put some snips into your gusset while we're um, putting it all together to get it to lay nicely. Now you should have clips on these sides as well. So I'm gonna clip that up there. And then this side. So from here, you've got all of your centers clipped. Now we're just working in these side gusset pieces and I am going to put just tiny little snips into my gusset on all four corners. Okay, do that on, I, I like to do it on all my corners. And they stay within like about one eighth of an inch clips because your seam allowance is only um, a quarter. It's only a one fourth inch seam allowance. So make sure you're not clipping anything major. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just Clip everything into place. It is all lining up super nicely, the way it's measured. It's clipping in there really nice. I'm not having to adjust much. It is going really nice and tight and perfect. Okay, so there is my gusset onto my first piece. I'm gonna go ahead and sew that on at a 1 fourth inch, a quarter inch seam allowance, and then we will add our binding to that.
Okay. So there's my first go around with it. Looks pretty good. I always like to look inside, make sure all my corners look okay. And when you go around with the bind in it, sometimes smooths out if you do have some bumps, it smooths out some of those bumps. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add the binding onto the bottom of our bag here. Okay, so I like to start at the bottom. Fold your, whatever you have in half, you can use fold over elastic. You can make use pre-made bias tape. You can use waterproof canvas. Seriously, it's up to you. Okay. So I'm just going to start clipping it on and I go all the way around with it. The thing about waterproof canvas is there is no bias on waterproof canvas. So it does tend to wrinkle just a little bit. Like it doesn't turn as pretty with your corners. So if you're really concerned with how the inside of your binding looks, which I don't think you should be because nobody looks at it except you, um, don't use waterproof canvas because it does tend to have um, non-perfect corners because of the non-bias on it. And then I just, you can fold over your edge if you want. When you end here, you can just leave it raw. It's up to you. You can just give it a tiny little fold so it's not a complete raw edge. Okay, so now I'm going to sew that on and you really wanna try and catch both sides, right? So I like to sew it on with my gusset side up. For me, that works easier. So everybody's different. <laughs> Do what works for you. I'm just telling you what works for me. All right, oh, my foot. Oh, I'm glad nothing was under there. <laughs> Here we go. All right, I like to start down at my bottom piece here. And here we go.
All right, before I go any further, I like to make sure that I see that I got it on both sides, and I did. All right. It's not gorgeous. Do you see that? That's because it's waterproof canvas. It doesn't have a stretch. It doesn't lay flat. So as long as you're okay with that, which I am because, again, you do not really see the binding in bags like this. All right, so I'm gonna turn it out so you can see what it looks like, and then we'll do the other side. Push my cute little corners out. Oh, I like it. Oh, that's cute, oh my gosh. Like how adorable that is. Ooh, I love this quilted front pocket. Okay, so that's what we have so far. I'm gonna go ahead and add the second panel. We are doing the same steps that we did with this first side, but now just with our second panel. So here we go. Okay, all of my binding is on there. I am happy with it, it looks good. All right, so let's turn this right side out.
That is so cute. All right, there is my Michelle bag. My corners look good. I need to just work them a little bit more so they pop out nicely. <gasps> so cute, ta-da. Okay, there's my Michelle bag. Look how cute that turned out. Oh my gosh, I love it. It is such a cute little size. So just to give you an idea, here's the case, my phone case, right? Goes right inside this pocket on the front perfectly. Nice cell phone pocket. I love it. It is such a cute little make. And that wasn't difficult really at all, especially if you have done bindings on bags before, you can totally do this. And I love the quilted pocket on the front. This is a keeper. I'm excited to try it sling style and backpack style too. I think that'll be adorable. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Everything you need to know for information on vinyl, the designer, where to buy this pattern, um, my website, all that stuff is in the description of this video. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment and let me know. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.